Okay. Our son is doing all. There you go. Hi. Facebook, everyone on Facebook. Can you press for a line? <laughs> Which one? Yeah, this okay. is Hey Home Cooking. <laughs> if you're not familiar, <laughs> okay, man. Hey Home Cooking stands for healthy, easy, yummy home cooking. Okay. <laughs> That's what this home cooking is all about. And what's unique about this cooking class is like I mentioned earlier before we went live, we have people cooking along with us. All right. So this is one way that we're making sure. Our salad master owners are continually learning how to make the most use of their salad master cookware, but we are not limiting this cooking class to people who only have salad master. We've always welcomed people who don't have them. The only difference is I'm gonna to have to teach people two different ways of doing it, okay? The traditional way and the salad master way. Cool? So here we go. Honey? Yes. You want to say something? <laughs> He's quiet. He's so quiet um, today. He's so sleeping. who's cooking with us? Like the real Sharon, are you cooking or him there? You're just taking I notes. I think Sharon is watching. Yeah, just taking notes. Okay. So which is perfect. We got that uh, Twanda cooking. We have the Williamses from um from where are Darren and Twanda? Kansas. Tulsa. Tulsa. <laughs> I kind of like Darren and Tawanda, I kind of blanked. And then we have What's John up, and Amy. <laughs> John and Amy Dolman, who's in West Plano. And then we have Gina Prudential, who is in East Plano. East Plano. And then we have Marisa Gonzalez, who is in Garland. Correct, Marisa? Who else yes. is with us? Yes. We have four families cooking with is us. Is Gina with us? Mm -hmm. oh, is yeah, it Yes. Gina is with us. So one thing that I want to request before we move on, I would like for our participants to please um, show yourselves on the video. Please show yourselves and turn on your camera. Don't worry, we're spotlighted. You're not being seen. It's just me and Chad until we spotlight you That's towards cool. the end. Hey, Marvy, I'm going to hop off and get on my phone because the camera on our computer is not working. Oh, OK. Only because um, when we're trying to ask questions, it helps us to see and just here on our screen, we can kind of see who's um, a little behind or has a question. Hi, Marissa. There you go. I saw. Hey, baby. Who is that? Isabella or Clarissa? This is Clarissa. Say hi. Hi, hi Clarissa. <laughs> she said she was going to help today. All right. I Perfect. know uh, Lorraine from Dublin is also with us, but uh, she has her camera off. That's fine, Lorraine, but later on, just say hi if you have a question. You can turn mm -hmm. on your camera. Uh, again, uh, for if you're new to this format, um, you're not actually shown on Facebook, okay? All your screen is just us. However, when people share their finished dishes later on, in this case, the decorated crepes, we will share your video uh, briefly, okay? So that you could, uh, you know, the, the people on Facebook Live can also appreciate that it's true, there are people cooking along. It's not like we're faking this. <laughs> All right, perfect. So to start with, we are making crepes today. The beauty of how we're gonna teach you this today, we'll share with you how you can come up with crepes from scratch, depending on what starch you have at home. Okay, make sense? Because you can make crepes many different ways. The most basic will be your eggs, milk, and cornstarch. Okay, and arrowroot. I always say arrowroot. People have been like, what is arrowroot powder? It's actually just cornstarch from a different source, not corn, but the root crop, the arrowroot crop. Okay, that's the only difference. But um, the, the how, how would you, what's the name? The, the way they work the same. <laughs> I cannot find the word. Okay, you all. And then that's one. And that's completely gluten-free because you did not use any flour, right? But then there are times you don't have that much cornstarch, you have pancake mix, right? Like Tawanda before used. So you can use your pancake mix, milk, eggs, and a little bit of cornstarch still, okay? Because it's the cornstarch that makes your crepe a little more like, um, how do you call that, elastic. <laughs> Stretchy. Can, stretchy. <laughs> okay, it's the cornstarch that does that. If you just have pancake mix 
it will be thin and it will easily cut through. That's the problem with that, okay? So that's another thing you can use. Or finally, if you don't have a pancake mix, you can use your ordinary flour, whatever you have, make it gluten-free or your organic all-purpose all or non-organic, it doesn't matter. We will try to walk you through all the choices. So if they use okay. flour, they still need to add cornstarch so that it'll be pliable? Yes. Okay. It will have to have cornstarch or it's not going to work if you just have flour, okay? okay. And some baking powder. So in the order of, of like, uh, if you really want to get the consistency of grapes that you order from your ice cream shop, it's better to use cornstarch. Right. Uh, wait, honey, can I go here? Sorry, is this my phone? No, that's my phone. It's your phone? Where's my phone? Sorry, everybody. We're going from one place to the next. Okay, here we go. Grab your blender. I said, get your blender ready. You can do this without a blender. It will just be a little bit hard to kind of like make sure everything is um, completely like a mix through and you don't have lumps. So it's always easier to have a blender. So I said in our list, what do we have? Do you have the list, honey? So this is double the turp, the usual batch that I make, okay? The usual batch I make is only with six eggs. The ingredient list, um, Sharon and Lorraine that I sent everybody has double the amount, okay? Because we're going to make a big batch. Why? I found that every family tells me every, everything was gone with just one batch. <laughs> We didn't have enough. So for you all to have enough, at least, because this is a favorite for real. I doubled it up. Okay, so how, what okay, do you Okay, here need? we go. So you got you need your um, your flour, your arrowroot powder. So if you're Filipino, it's oraro. That's the Filipino term. But you need a cup of that, okay? Um, then you need... Um, <clears throat> okay, so that's where you, he, she made this flexible. You basically need a cup of the cornstarch or arrow root powder. And then if you're using another kind of, um, of starch, then you'll need two cups of those. Okay, so whether it's all-purpose flour, gluten-free flour, or um, pancake mix. Then you need 12 pieces of eggs, <clears throat> oil of choice. And what is our oil of choice, honey? Okay, so I'm not sure what she's using. I think we're just using butter. Okay. And then milk of choice, four cups. We're using lactose-free reduced fat milk here. And then sweetener of choice, whether it's sugar, two tablespoons, or maple syrup, two tablespoons. What is our oil? Uh, we're going to use um, avocado oil. Avocado oil, so that we have a higher um, smoke point. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can actually skip the avocado oil. Okay, so that's it. Again, uh, you need three cups of your starch, uh, 12 eggs, uh, two tablespoons of oil, um, milk, four cups of milk. It's a lot, right? You know why? Um, it's really that good. <laughs> if you don't want to make such a big batch, uh, then you can you cut this by half. We're, we're teaching you how to make a bigger batch so you can just store it in your ref, in your fridge. And then you can uh, just serve it to your kids as snacks or breakfast the next day or in the next couple of days. Mm -hmm. Okay, All right. that's it. Here we go. How do we do this? Grab your bigger pitcher, okay? Um, in our case, I had both out, but we're going to use the bigger one, your blender. And here's how we do this. We simply layer all of our ingredients in a blender. All right, did you get your blenders? Now here's the deal. Before we even put everything here, whatever you're using, whether you're using the electric skillet or you're using your ordinary um, skillet on your stove top, we are going to preheat 300 degrees on your skillet, electric skillet, 350, or medium on your stove top. I'm doing that right now. Okay? Okay, Marisa, Marisa, were you trying to ask a question? Yes, sorry, I didn't realize I had my mic on. Um, you said if we didn't want to make that whole big batch, we could have everything on the receipt, on the recipe? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 
Thank you. Half everything, yeah. So six but, eggs, one and a half cups, and all that. Right, but I kid you not, because you have three kids, Marissa, it's gonna go fast. Like I made this batch last Friday, hoping I would have some leftovers. There was none. <laughs> it was gone. <laughs> anyway, here we go. So while we're preheating, it's important to preheat Sharon and Lorraine because, and everyone else, because this is how we're gonna make sure when we use our our salad master that it does crepes don't stick. Okay, so you're gonna learn how to do that today because a lot of people are like, you're using that. It's a stainless steel. It's gonna stick because they've never done um, crepes with stuff that are not with non-stick coating. Well, you can do it with Solid Master, but the preheating is key, okay? So now that's being preheated, we move on to this one. Very simple. All our ingredients, what we're gonna do in our pitcher, blender pitcher, we're going to layer. We're going to start with six eggs, okay, honey? So you're gonna sandwich the dry ingredients. We're going between, to layer. Between the liquids. Right, because yeah. if you put your um, powder and your flour on top, it's going to explode on the jar, on the lid. And there are also gonna be a lot of dry ingredients here and it's not gonna mix properly. So what you wanna do is liquid, dry ingredients, liquid on top, make sense? And then that will be a breeze. It will be like without even a minute, it's done. Okay. So here we go. Six eggs. And while Chad is cracking the six eggs, so we're having the 12, right? We're doing 12 eggs for us. So six at the bottom, six on top later. Marissa, if you're having the recipe, then you go three eggs at the bottom, three on top later. Okay, but I'm let me go ahead and do it all. Okay, go ahead. So let me go around real quick so I can help guide you through. Um, Marissa, what flour are you using with the arrowroot and the cornstarch or the cornstarch? Um, I just have to get the all-purpose flour. Okay, if you have pancake mix, you can use the pancake mix or you don't necessarily need to use a pancake mixer or flour. You can go straight up cornstarch with a lot of eggs. Okay. Okay. So, I'm so it's going to be either or. I won't use both. You can use both if you want to. So Total those, of three cups, Marisa. Yeah. So whatever the combination. That's the difference that I'm trying to show you because it's so you can use either or. And I'll try to tell you what the differences would be as we go along. Okay. So depending on what you have at home is my point. You can make crepes from scratch, okay? So here you go, six eggs, and what's next? We do the milk. You do half your milk as well. So if you're using full-blown four cups of milk, you do two now. Okay. All right? So I actually don't make crepes, so I don't have an answer to every time you ask me a question. Yeah, I usually am the one who makes yeah. this. So you have to tell me what to do. <laughs> right. Yes, sir. So okay. two there, so half the milk as well, okay? And then just put on all of your oil at this point. Two tablespoonfuls of oil is what I said, right? Avocado oil. Very minimal. In fact, like I said earlier, you can totally split the oil and it will be fine. What's the difference? This kind of helps make it stretchier. It helps it be pliable. Mm -hmm. Can I you repeat the amount of oil? Two, two tablespoons. tablespoons. Okay. All right. And then after that, we put in all our powder. Okay. So what are the powders? We are going to have our, first of all, our cornstarch or your arrowroot. How much arrowroot, honey? One cup. Here we go. This is all You'll probably have. use everything, yeah. No, I have more. Okay. Yeah, I'll use that. Ta-da! In case you guys are wondering, this is what, yeah, the arrowroot. Okay? It really is um, corn starch. From a different made from a different source. Go ahead, honey. So one cup arrowroot for us, and I'm using here. 
gluten-free pancake mix. Okay, so what I'm doing today is completely gluten-free. Is anybody in my house gluten intolerant? No. <laughs> I'm just trying to avoid as much gluten as I can, whenever I can, okay? And because so many people have intolerance to gluten nowadays, it's just easier to make it gluten-free and then when somebody comes and voila, all of a sudden they're gluten intolerant, well, you're ready. <laughs> and they taste good actually. Okay. All right. And how much of this? Well, two cups. And then two cups of your. Go ahead, hon. We're using pancake mix, okay? Gluten free pancake mix. So if you're using regular flour, your unbleached flour, go ahead and add that. Two. Yes, please. Two. If it's just flour, what you need to do is grab some baking powder. Everyone who's using plain flour, grab some baking powder, please. I'm going to put it here. Do half a teaspoon of baking powder and half a teaspoon of baking soda. Okay? If you're not using a pancake mix. This is the difference. I'm walking you through everything. But if you're like us who used a pancake mix, you don't need to add baking soda or baking powder at all. Okay? Yes? And that, didn't you use a uh, arrow powder? Yeah, we need one cup of arrowroot. Are you using all arrowroot tea? I'm using arrowroot and flour. Okay, right. so you don't need to add the cornstarch that she's talking about, or the baking powder that she's talking about. What is the pancake doing flour, honey? She did one arrowroot and two cups of flour. Right, if it's regular flour and it's not a pancake mix, you use baking soda and baking uh, you powder. Still do. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you uh, don't use so baking soda and baking powder when you are using pancake mix because it's built in. Those mixes have it. So if yeah. you're using a regular all-purpose flour, please do a teaspoonful of baking powder and a teaspoonful of baking soda. So we don't. We don't need that because we don't or a teaspoon, or half a teaspoon. A minute ago, you said a half a teaspoon. Yeah, I meant um, a tablespoon, but now I'm saying one teaspoon. Sorry, you guys. One teaspoon of each. One thing. One teaspoon of each. Hello, everybody. So let me just ask Gina quickly, what are you using for your flour, Gina? I'm using the gluten-free all-purpose baking flour. Okay, so same thing, it could, because it's an all-purpose baking flour, you need some baking powder and baking soda, please. Okay. All right. Perfect. So, if you're using this recipe and you don't have any flour at all, you're going to go straight to two cups of arrowroot powder or just plain cornstarch. Make sense? So it's only two cups of plain arrowroot or cornstarch instead of one cup of that and two cups of flour. Why is the total smaller? Because arrowroot or cornstarch is so much more powerful if you do three cups with the amount of eggs and milk, your crepe is going to be hard. <laughs> Makes sense? Papery, you want it soft, okay? Do you see the difference? Am I making sense? No, cool. what if, uh, you said earlier that if they don't have any uh, arrow root. Cornstarch. Yes, but uh, so at the very minimum, you need a cup of cornstarch. That's really the requirement mm -hmm. okay so mm -hmm. again if you're just taking notes um the binder is really the cornstarch or our yes. so we need a cup at least of that then if you're using any other kind of flour then add two cups and then the one teaspoon of soda and powder but if you are using pancake mix then just two cups of that along with the one cup of with uh, this recipe all right anybody else has a question are we ready to move on Yes, okay. So after you have all your powdered um, ingredients, dry ingredients in there, the other thing that you're gonna need is a couple of pinches of salt, okay? Just a couple. So there you go. 
Did we put the sugar in? No. Oh. No. Okay. There's no sugar, remember? There's a sweetener of choice. You mentioned. Yeah, sweetener of choice, but that's going to be liquid. Considered liquid, it's going to be on top. Not yet. Mm -hmm. I'm just uh, doing the dry ingredients for now. Sweetener. So unless you have sugar, Amy, unless you're using sugar. Are you using sugar? Yeah. Okay, you can add that to your dry ingredients now. They're dry. So the, the only thing to remember is you're doing your liquid, half of your liquids at the bottom, all your dry ingredients in the middle, and then all of the other half on top. Okay? okay. There you go. After that, then we add everything else. So in our case, our sweetener is maple syrup. So we're gonna add our maple syrup for now. Okay. Just so but we can we're still gonna we're still gonna add the salt in the sweetener. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. So we're adding that now. And it's two tablespoons, right? I don't remember. So this is according to your taste. Now, some people do not want their crepes sweet at all, especially those who want to make um, savory crepes. You can totally omit the sweetener or add to it, depending on what kind of crepes you're going to try to make, Sharon and Lorraine, okay? So you can either add stay the same, a little, little bit of sweet, or go a lot more sweet if you're really trying to just make um, the sort crepes. So make I just sense? got it's two tablespoons. Mm -hmm. So this is bare minimum. It will not even make it sweet at all, promise. I'm using maple syrup, grade A. Mm -hmm. Your maple syrup, and then, now we add all the milk, the, the rest of the milk. Okay. So two more. I don't think we have enough. So okay. we have I'm going to grab one. Probably use up all our milk. So this is one. And I think we have enough. So we're good. There you go. I have very little left, so I'm just going to add it. <laughs> and then what else do we have left? Just our eggs. Right? Yeah. Six more eggs. Go ahead, honey. Okay. So this is actually very easy. What throws people off is their uncertainty as far as the ingredients of crepe is concerned, okay? But the making of the batter is so easy. Boink. And then I'll teach you how to look at the consistency of the batter at the end. So you can kind of like add, kind of tweak if it's kind of too watery and it breaks apart easily, then you can tell what to add in the end. Okay, I'll show you how to do that. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> okay, I see six yolks. Are five. you sure? Yes. <laughs> I think he miscounted or- No, I'm gonna count. Okay. Here we go. So now that everything is there, do you see? Everything liquid on top. So you put it in, you just give it a very fast whirl, like just even a minute on blend, okay? And you'll see how fast this is gonna go. Okay, it's 11, you need me to add one Yes. Okay. Oh, he counted the shells of the eggs. <laughs> one more for us, ready? Anybody? And then the fun begins. <laughs> Every crepe that we make, we're just gonna keep making, okay? Like with the fillings. Ta-da. So I'll try to show you in the skillet, the EOC, or the regular skillet on top, how to spread your batter at the bottom and how you kind of like um, make it go round, okay? To the perfect thinness or consistency on the skillet. There you go. We're gonna do our, our thing now, okay? Our blender, so a little bit. It's gonna be a little bit noisy. Mm -hmm. Power, power on. Okay. Okay, it was not even a minute. Do you see this? It's done. We did not have to worry about all the dry ingredients in between. Did you guys do yours? Look at this, it's completely done. There's no powder on the side, none, it's so clean, okay? If you've tried doing this in the past, the reason why I'm able to tell you and give you these tips, I've made this so many times and I've made all the mistakes 
that you are now avoiding <laughs> because I learned. In the past, there would be so much powder here and powder on the lid because <laughs> I did not sandwich and layer like we did. Do you see how easy that was? Not even a minute in your blender. Ta-da. Okay. All right. Then what you're going to do in your EOC or on your um, skillet on the stovetop, this is ready. How do you know if it's ready? It's hot enough. Try to sprinkle some water. Sprinkle some water. Ta-da. It's okay. Honey, why did you remove it? That's good. This one isn't. Okay, my EOC, I didn't realize. I just is did. This is what she's talking about. Those beads running around. Yeah. So my one on the stove top is ready. This one is not. Amy, you're going to do the same thing with your EOC to make sure it's hot enough. This one is not ready. You want it to bounce. That way you know that your mix will not stick to the pan. That's exactly. why. Exactly. Yeah. So, Mikael, I'm going to ask my son, please transfer to this other camera. Okay, can you guys see this one? Can you please transfer to the other camera yeah, over here? Yeah, it's clear. We can see it. All right. Now, please get something um, from your house that's kind of like deep enough to stick into your blender. Here's why. It's going to take a while to kind of like cook all of these crepes. The problem with flour and arrowroot especially, it settles at the bottom, okay? So while you're cooking your crepes, you're going to have to keep mixing this one. Do you see this? I got a spatula that's deep enough because I'm gonna keep stirring this mixture because the flour, your cornstarch, is going to keep settling at the bottom, all right? While you're cooking all your crepes. Now, here's the deal. How do we know this is right? Now, butter. If you can grab some butter, this is what I always do. You can do butter or oil. Take your pick. If you have some oil, put it in a small bowl and get a spatula or a paper towel. Get a spatula or a paper towel. You're going to need a bit of that for your skillet. Okay? So this is how we turn our skillet nonstick. And then we're going to lower our temperature to three because it's too hot, lower your temperature. After preheating it really well, we are going to lower it to three. All right. I removed it because it's too hot. So I removed that um, because the butter, it, see, it burns really fast. And then if you have a one-third measuring cup or anything you have at home, I always find the one-third measuring cup effective. Here we go. I use it as a measuring tool. And pour in the middle, twirl to the side. You see this? Ta-da! Again, if you don't have a, this one, what do you call this? Brush. A brush. <laughs> I keep forgetting my words for the life of me. If you don't have this, you can use a paper towel just to kind of like do it at the bottom. The thing with crepes, they cook really fast. If it's dry on here, you flip it at once. Now this is very hot, you guys. You're gonna have to lower your, like mine was too hot. So now here, do you see this? If it's breaking apart like that, you need a little more of your flour or cornstarch. Add some cornstarch or flour. In our case, I'm gonna do half a cup more of the cornstarch. Did you see that? So that's what I meant when I said, test it, if it breaks apart, you will know what to add afterwards, okay? Make sense? So we're adding half a cup. Mikael, can you go to the front camera again, please? We're adding half a cup of our arrow. Did you guys see all that? Okay, so we're troubleshooting on the fly here. It's um, okay. That's what here's I one do half cup. every time. Okay. That's what I do every time. Yeah, but Marvi is really the expert with grapes, so you'll see. Okay. It will turn perfect in a minute. 
We were having major blender issues over here, so I finally got it blended. Um, do we, I know we put some water, but do, can we also put butter, you said, or some ghee or something? Uh, water. Oh, the, when we did the test of the temperature. Oh, that's just a test. Okay. This is the temperature test. The beads would have to be, now when the beads start rolling and your pan is already hot enough, what you're going to need to do afterwards on your stove top is turn it into medium low because then it's going to be too hot, especially if you're using butter. If you're doing your EOC and it's already like hot enough after 350, you're going to lower this to 300 or 275. Before start making the. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we start making it. So now this is a 275. So the preheating at the higher temperature is just to help your um, solid masterpiece to be like a little bit nonstick. Makes sense. That's how we still butter or ghee or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Sorry. Ghee, oh, yes. Use like a, a paper towel so it's very little. You dab it around, or if you don't have this, I keep forgetting the term for this one. So I added just half a cup of arrowroot, and then I'm going to add go back. Maybe I should use it here. So if it's the EOC, look again, butter. I'm also using the the silicone brush. Is what it is. Sharon, I finally remembered. It's a silicone brush for the life of me. I couldn't remember what I'm trying to say. <laughs> there. So this one I was able to catch. And then, honey, because it's such a big <coughs> bottom, Amy, I'm going to use half a cup, okay? Because it's such a big bottom. It's, it's wide. a much wider, it's wide. yeah. It's a much wider skillet than the other one. So half a cup in your, it's my first time to be using the EOC for crepes. Okay, so here. For it to be a complete round, you're gonna have to cover the bottom. So I'm swirling. This is what I always do regardless of what I'm using, you swirl. Half a cup is not even enough because it's too wide. So it's a little bit more than half a cup, Amy, right? Because Amy is the only one that's using the EOC for this as well. There you go. Now, how do you know that it's time to flip it? The top has to be really dry. Okay, this is the difference between um, pancake and crepes. The top of your crepe has to be completely dry before you flip it. With pancake, you just wait for there to be a little bit of bubbles on top, right? This one, no, you have to wait for it to be completely dry. That's when you flip. Okay, so here, see? How do you know it's getting there? When your liquid is not running, this one is still running a little bit, okay? So there, so I'm gonna leave it there. It's at 300 now, my EOC. And then Chad just lifted on the other side on the stove. Mikael, can you go to this side so they can see what's going on on this one? So on my stove top, this is now at number three, medium low. All right, so we went from medium to medium low. So this is our second crepe on the stove top. So you see how I'm swirling it again? Ta-da! And then we're gonna wait for the top to be completely dry. Make sense? Look, these are some of my crepes that got obliterated. <laughs> These are some of the crepes that got obliterated earlier, right? Moms, you don't throw that away. That is not wasted. You know what you do? <laughs> I'll show you what I do with these pieces. Cinnamon. And either maple syrup or a little bit of chocolate. You have this to move a little bit the camera is yummy. Do you see that? I just dusted it with cinnamon and a little bit of maple syrup. This is really good. So this is the good thing about crepes. You don't waste anything. <laughs> is everybody following along? Are you starting to cook yours? Anyone? Anyone? So here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, do you know that um, in stores nowadays, they actually are selling crepes that are toasted, that are like in small bits? 
Have you seen those? Mmm, yum. So now you loosen it up on the side. Regardless of what you're using, you loosen this up on the sides. So when I swirl my, my batter in this one, I hardly, I make sure that the batter does not go all the way to the sides. It's just at the bottom, because then you're going to have a hard time loosening it on the sides. And you still here. Okay. Can you hear me? Because Marvis on the other camera. Um, She's flipping the, the pancake, the pancake, the, the crepe. Okay, so see, this is completely dry. And watch this. I'm using a stainless steel turner too. Do you see how we like that? Did not break it off? Yeah, that one is perfect now. You see? So that's what you do when your uh, crepe starts to break. And I learned this just now too. Then you add a little more arrow root, the binder. Or cornstarch. Or your cornstarch, yeah. There you go. Did you see? How perfectly brown that is. So How much cornstarch did you add? One half. Oh, like more? One half. So we actually ended up with three and a half. Uh, of the cornstarch? No, the cornstarch, you ended up with one and a half, right? No, no, total. Total, um, total starch. Yeah. So I'm loosening up the one on the, honey, can you watch the other one now here? How okay, you know can we please go back to the main time. camera? As soon as you flip your crepe to the other side, you only need about 10 seconds because the actual cooking happens on the first, the first time you put it down on the skillet, okay? When it's completely dry on top, that's actually almost pretty much done. So when you flip, only about five to seven seconds, it's completely done. Now here, look at the EOC because I want to show you the ginormous one. Let me see if I can even flip this. Like I said, this is my first time using the EOC for such a big piece of crepe, but look at this. <laughs> look at this, everybody. Ta-da! Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I took it. There's the, you can't, you can't see it because of the color, but there, see that? Yeah. So nice. that's the one on the stove top. This is the one using the skillet. Amy, the EOC, do you see it's how big. big it is? Yeah. This is what you're going to end up with. <laughs> so here, I don't know what I'm going to make of this. So just five seconds and that's done. So again, the full blown cooking time that somehow sometimes um, ends up about a minute, a minute and a half is just on one side. The first time you pour your batter into your skillet. Okay. Now here. I'm gonna call Dr. G, come here, or my daughter. Okay, I'm gonna transfer this to a plate that is so big. She's sleeping. Do you see this? Wow. Now immediately, I'm gonna have her put whatever she wants. So you can do this two ways. One way you can do this is add something here, a filling, fold it into two, and then add filling on another side, okay? So here, G, because it's okay. big. So here's honest. your banana. And there's some there's bananas. Your and then I'm going to continue cooking the crepe on this one. It still is at 300, Amy. Everybody who's going to use their EOC in the future, it still is at 300. So I'll, I'll make another crepe here too? Yes, please. And Chad will continue making it in the smaller one. <laughs> here we go. I want sweet. Do I want sweet? Do I want <laughs> yum? Is everybody following along? So this is just going to be one crepe at a time, and then we're going to just start making it the way we want to, whether you want it savory or sweet. So this is uh, more than half a cup on the EOC because it's huge. So wide at the bottom at 300. Well, just, yeah. Yeah. I do need there some you go. mixture. Please remember, as you're used doing your crepes, you just well, have to make sugars. sure you keep stirring it. Stir, okay? Because your starch is um, settling at the bottom. Okay? So there you go. Chad, honey, uh, Mikael, can you please go to dad? 
he's gonna pour some more in the smaller on the stove top. It's this fun now. Here, I'm gonna move some things so you can start. G, go there in the camera. Tell, show them what you're making. So um, I'm putting banana, sour cream, but and strawberry. Okay. And I'm going to put some honey or maple okay. syrup. Mikael, you want to show Tita G in the front? Okay, thank you, Kuya. I know, right? We're so... So she did um, not sour cream. That's cream cheese. Uh, that's cream cheese. She did cream cheese with a little bit of um, <gasps> banana and strawberries and some maple syrup. Yeah. Your, your filling is so small compared to the crepe. Yeah. <laughs> How are you I, I'm gonna oh, she's going to cut it. No, 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 yeah. no. Here, I want to show you. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> she's going to cut the crepe. <laughs> I'm intervening. Put it there. Put it on one side. Fourth of the side right here, right? Okay. Move it there. We're going to fold. I'm going to show you how to do this in a pretty manner. Yeah. Fold one time. No, 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 because she doesn't want to eat the whole thing. Yeah. No, you can just eat half of it. Fold one time and then put something else here, please. What do you want? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> she doesn't know what else she wants. Okay, so she did cream cheese, banana, have strawberries. Cream cheese okay, she wants well. a little bit more of cream cheese. She wants a little bit more of cream cheese. She watches her diet a lot somehow right somehow and i'm jet lagged so okay so we're gonna fold this so you can do whatever filling on another fourth i'm just showing you to give you an idea and then you finally fold it on top like that yum make sense and then what you see in the restaurants is here they add some okay. more strawberries so you can add whatever do you want a little bit more maple syrup yeah or you can also have some no, chocolate, no, chocolate chips. No, no, she no. doesn't want, she's not a nice person to do this with because she's so minimal there. And then she just added a little bit more. But you see how we folded it, the big one, the big crepe. So you can be creative with whatever you want. So this is a dessert crepe that she did. I did. Thank you. Thank you for my dessert. <laughs> now here the smaller crepe i'll show you what we love to do for a savory crepe this is something that i love to make cream cheese but this time it's going to be savory and what you want to do is put it here towards the end like the the closer the third one third okay your cream cheese at the bottom so good come here Show, show your face to everybody. This is really yummy, you all. I kid you not. It's so good. Yum. And this is like kind of like better version because, you know, we use tons of eggs, right? So this is very high in protein. And then after the cream cheese, so this is an example of a savory crepe, okay? After the cream cheese, avocado. Avocado, ta-da. Bam, 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 bam. Okay. Let me grab another one. So I just sliced up some fresh avocados. Line it up. This is so good. <laughs> She's in heaven. She's going to keep eating. You're going to have some really nice dinner, everybody. Oops. My avocado kind of like jumped. Do you see how I lined it up? And then the third thing grab any cold cuts you have at home i have some turkey i have some ham you know the uncured ham i'm gonna use my is this even open yet turkey so you can use um what other cold cuts are there the the one the one that's steak what is that called Philly steak what is it called the one that's beef honey the cold cuts salami Pastra, whatever you can do pepperoni whatever you want <laughs> so i'm using tada this is turkey cuts okay turkey that's uncured and you just lay it down now the reason why it's towards here to do you see this 
It's not in the middle because you will be able to roll it up better if it's towards the end, not in the middle. Most people make the mistake of putting their fillings in the middle and it doesn't close properly. So it's towards the end, about one fourth. Like, look at this. Ta-da! Here, who wants the savory? Do you see how nicely it was? You can pick it up and it doesn't fall apart. Hey, Kuya. Okay? So this is your avocado cream cheese and cold cut savory crepe. Now here. Kuya, can you shift the camera to the stove top? Oh, okay. My honey wants to show you something. Okay, so I did one. Look, um, since, since I'm not familiar with baking crepes, I think I added a few more seconds. It's a little more brown, right? But this is done. And look at what I'm doing here. I'm browning some garlic because Another way of doing it is to add Savory. garlic with tomatoes, right? And basil. Yes. In the Philippines, this used to be so expensive whenever we went out on a date. Uh, you, I don't know if you know garlic rolls in Malate. Mm -hmm. They would serve this. Okay, this is better. Mm -hmm. So where does this go? Okay. On the plate. So we're good here. We have this camera. We can go back to the main one. So what Chad is doing for another savory crepe, and we're going to show you how we do it again next, is um, so he's simply um, cooking, browning a bit of minced garlic, okay? He's not going to cook the tomatoes. Are you cooking the tomatoes? No, Are you going to add it? No. He's not going to add the tomatoes, but here, if I can give you a tip, pro tip, tomatoes are better cooked. Yeah. Tomatoes have a higher lycopene content when they're cooked. So I'm gonna convince my husband, we have some tomatoes here, for him to add it to the garlic, to cook it a little bit, okay? okay All right, so he's gonna do that for another savory crepe. So that's your tomato, your garlic tomato um, crepe with some basil, dried basil. It is so good, everyone. I'm salivating because all of these things are so good. I'm gonna make you hungry. Now here, another way of doing your crepe, ta-da! Dr. G did a combination of banana and um, strawberries. Do you know what the most popular um, dessert crepe is? Hazelnut. Hazelnut and banana Nutella. is the most popular dessert crepe according to all the people who so sell crepes. Yeah. So there you go. I need to let's show them how we're going to make the savory crepe, okay? Uh, I, need, I need a few more minutes to brown it. Yeah, yeah. So here. Nutella, <laughs> this is the most popular. Is anybody going to contest that? No, no, this is the most popular. I should you not. It's in every crepery that we've ever visited. Nutella doesn't go out of style. Yeah. And then, cream too. Mm -hmm. And then you add your, you know, you don't have to make it so pretty. It's okay if it's not perfect, just pound on your, if you want a lot of um, bananas, it's up to you. The best kind, though, that I find, the kind, the banana, as far as ripeness is concerned, when you're making grapes, don't get the very ripe ones. It's not good. It doesn't taste as good, in my opinion. Get something that's kind of like midway, okay? So here, Nutella, banana, and then... <laughs> Some of your kids who are watching this are going to go like, ah, I want some of those. You roll it up. So again, did you see? I did it towards the end, not in the center. And then you roll it up. And then, uh, okay, who wants to come eat some of these? This is what my kids love. Ta-da! Whipped cream on top. And then, uh, this is simple. <laughs> This is sinfully good. <laughs> look, look, Sharon, you're gonna wish you made it today. And then a oh. drizzle of chocolate. Look at that. Your hazelnut crepe. Your Nutella banana crepe. Okay, dessert. Ta da! Mwah. Next, <laughs> so look, I have two crepes, savory and dessert. So if you are having dinner with us tonight, this is your meal, this is your dessert, <laughs> right? 
And the beauty of it is that you can have a bar and then people can just choose whatever they want to make. Then here, this one, if you notice, the one that I've left on the EOC, I am intentionally browning it a little bit more. I'm browning this, you see? Look, it's a lot more brown and it's a little bit toasty on the side. Why? This is how I like it. <laughs> Charm's like it. That's what I want to. This is how I love it. You know what I do with this? Here. Like I did with G, halfway. And then here's my favorite thing. No filling, no nothing. I kid you not. This is a lot of cinnamon. I love cinnamon, you all. And then if you have some powdered sugar, do a little bit of powdered sugar just to dust it. And then I fold it up and then a little bit more cinnamon. You all are going to go more and be, oh my goodness, it's a lot of cinnamon. Cinnamon is good for you, <laughs> right? And um, this is with a lot of, um, what do you call this? A lot of um, eggs. So it's a lot of protein. And then <laughs> on top, <laughs> this is what I do. This is how I eat, I eat my crepes for real, everybody. And just a little bit of my chocolate drizzle. So I don't even do fillings. I like my crepe toasty, very simple, just like that. That's how I like my crepes, dessert type, okay? Now here's Chad, he's gonna show you how he's gonna make his next. Oh man, we have so many. I have three. You want to come over? <laughs> Eat with us. Eat with us. <laughs> this is so much fun. Oh man. We're going to have crisps coming out of my ears, which is nice. Okay, honey. Now he's going to show you how we do the tomato with garlic and a little bit of basil. Are you ready, hon? I'm going to make one more crepe. Yeah, you can. Uh, I mean, do you want to show it here or what? Here in the middle, please. Okay. So they can, it's, it's just a better view. All right, so I'm making another crepe in my EOC. So our temperature in the EOC has stayed at 300, okay? Okay, so I'm done with my crepe over here. Okay, you wanna put it on the plate? Okay. I'm really not an expert with this, but. <laughs> he does not like crepes as much, which is like sacrilege. <laughs> who doesn't like crepes? Right? It's like somebody who doesn't like chocolate, I think. <laughs> okay. I dropped it into the plate, but it's not flat. Okay, fine. I'll hold it. Oh. Okay, there you go. That's my crepe. It's full. It's full there. And then. Here's my uh, fried garlic with fresh basil, dried basil, and tomatoes, okay? What do you need? So this is actually perfect for the bigger crepe, okay? It's perfect for the bigger crepe, but he's going to do it with this one. So every time, look at how we do it. It's always towards the end, not in the middle, like a third. He's scooping some of the garlic and making sure it's on top of the other tomato. So this is going to be like your margarita crepe, basically, because it's tomato and, uh, and garlic. Okay. So it's very, very simple. And then um, that's it, really. And then I'm just going to roll it. This is really good. My 15-year-old, when she was 14 or even 13, she learned how to make grapes. From me, she actually has a video. Of, I think I'm going to upload it for you all to see. She made a video of herself making crepes, and this is her favorite kind of crepes to make as a 13 year old the one with tomatoes and garlic. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm going to have to use toothpicks to hold it. Oh, he went fancy, fancy. There you go. Okay. So that's done. That's your margarita crepe. And, uh, yeah, this is, uh, I like garlic, right? Garlic with a little bit of salted pepper. 
and then some uh, basil and some tomatoes. So I like this with a glass of wine. So this is perfect. I like savory crepes. Right. Okay. How's so everybody there you doing? Go. <laughs> we made one, two, three, four, five, six crepes. Okay. At this point, we did um, two savory, and then we did three that are not, three that are dessert crepes. When I saw, All right. Uh, how How's everybody crepes? doing? Okay. It's time to go around. Mikael, can we please show Amy Dolman? What's going on with the Amy Dolman? And then we're going to Tawanda and Darren next. Show us what you've made. Come on, spotlight them, please. Okay, so this is one that's cooking right now. I have a lot more to cook. Can you see my blender? We got yeah, started. Perfect. Yeah. Oh. Um, we had two. One was made with um, bananas, blueberries, and whipped cream. And one had, what did you just have? Syrup? Is that it? And bananas? But they're gone. They've been eaten. So sorry, I can't show you. Oh, no, it's gone. See, I told you, people are not going to wait. Does it taste good? Well, where are the ones who ate it? Where are they? Can you, can you show them on camera and let us ask them, did you like it, even though it's gone? <laughs> Come on, you guys. We want to see that there's some taste test. <laughs> there you go. Autumn is like, won't be smarty. It's gone. I like it. Do you see me? <laughs> we'll send some pictures of some more that we make. Perfect. Amy, did you try it at least? Not yet. Yeah, I, did. I tried a little piece of the first one that didn't turn look too well. And it the dough is delicious. Right? Of course, I us the other night too. But. Perfect. Okay, we're gonna come back. Please take a photo of one before it gets eaten. I'll try. <laughs> Share it with us. Thank you. All right, T, we're going to Tyron and Tawanda and then Gina, you're next. And then lastly, we're gonna go to Marissa. Marissa, please uh, show us something that's not eaten yet. <laughs> this is one that is still cooking, but we definitely have one that's being eaten currently. And then we <laughs> had about like four or six of them already. Ah, nice. Look at you. So this, hey, Sky, do you like it? Look at this, you guys. <laughs> He's eating the crepe. The crepe itself is good, right? Do you like it? He said it's delicious. <laughs> you know, this is the thing about crepes, even without anything, it's really good. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Darren. But, but show us something with some fillings, okay? In a little bit, okay. Thank you. And then next, come on, Gina. Let's go to Gina. Let's so, look at her crepes, Jen. Oh, look at that. Being cooked. And I made one uh, with strawberry, bananas, and cinnamon. Have you tried it yet? Yes. It's wow. good. Let me try the defective one. <laughs> the first one was defective, so I tried that, so. This is the second one, and then this is my third one that I have. Did you like it? Yes, it's very good. Yeah. Delicious. Even the defective one, right? I told you, yeah. even if you mess this thing up, don't throw it away. You eat it. Add yeah. something to it because it's still really good. That's the beauty of crepes. Thanks, Jean. Thank you. And finally, Marissa. Marissa. Okay. Okay, we're in the process right now. Clarissa, let me put my camera on. Can y'all see it? No, I need to flip the camera. Hold on. So she's about to eat the Nutella with banana oh, and whipped cream. Uh -huh. And I'm about to get another one out of the pan, but there's one here at the bottom. <laughs> Have you tried it yet? No. No, Clarissa's about to try it, so she's gonna let us know how it is. Okay, come on, she's come excited on, Clarissa, for it. Try it, try it. Tell me what you think. Well, no, uh, Clarissa, why don't you try the dough? I want you to try the crepe itself without anything. Tell me what you think. Okay. Just the crepe itself. Because that's the real test of a crepe, if you ask me. Is it good enough without anything? It's good. There you go. Mm, the dough. Mm -hmm. Yum. So kids, you're going to keep asking your mom to make this from now on. I promise you. <laughs> okay. There you go. That's it. Priya, can you go back to us? I have one more coming up. All right. Thank you, everybody. That's, that actually wraps up our uh, class. Uh, thank you. Uh,
the ones who joined us for the first time, uh, thank you so much, Sharon and Lorraine. Uh, yes. The ones who cooked with us, Amy, Darren, Tuanda, Marissa, Gina. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, at least you learn some tricks too. Like uh, if it turns out to be crust, uh, crumbly, then add a little bit more cornstarch, right? That's what Hey Home Cooking is all about. We make mistakes, we learn together. This is reality in the kitchen, you all, okay? We're not chefs. We're just parents like you all learning how to do healthy, easy, yummy home cooking as much as we can. So thank you so much, Sharon and Lorraine and everybody else who joined us on Facebook. I'm so sorry we didn't get the, a chance to do a shout out. We're getting busy making all our crepes. Look, I have so much more. We have some guests coming over. But look, one thing I want to point out, Solid Master owners, okay, DC, your Solid Master pieces can be used like it's nonstick, okay? You just got to learn how. Make sense? Darren and T, is there anything else you want to show us before we wrap up? We're good? Clarissa? Um, I'm going to eat it. I'm going to taste it. Oh, <laughs> Oh, she wants Taste to be. It. All right. Mom, Clarissa, are you trying to tell us it's good? Yes? She's saying it's good. She has the thumbs up big time. There you go. Mikael, can you go to Clarissa? Put her on the spotlight. I love, I love what she was saying. Come on, Clarissa. It's, it's show us the it looks good. It looks good. So good. <laughs> Do you want to have more of it? <laughs> She's eating right now. She's <laughs> okay, perfect. She put whipped cream at and, the top. Um, that's awesome. I can't wait. Mar Marissa, please take photos and share it with us on Facebook. That would be so awesome. Okay. And then Darren and Joanna Miguel, last thing, they want to show us what they made. The one thing that they made. What are those? Blueberry, blueberry and, and powdered sugar. sugar. Yum. See? We like Anything it goes. Those. All the yeah. flavors. <laughs> that you cannot find in creperies or restaurants you can make at home. And you right? can top it with ice cream too. Yes. Or whipped cream. All yes. right. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. We appreciate you joining us this evening. I hope your Sunday night is fun with all the scrapes. And you yes. have a lot of leftovers. <laughs> Please send us photos, 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 photos. I will my, always beg for the photos. My savory crepe now. And share it with us. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. I did say you're winning something. Wait, I did say on the invite you're winning something, didn't I? Where? Everybody who cooked with us. Oh. Okay, here we go. I did say that on the invite. Don't leave. Here we go. I have a spinning wheel for everybody who's here, including the ones, um, Sharon and Lorraine. I think they're no longer here. Oh, they're here. <laughs> okay. Stay put, because I did say on the invite, I'm giving you something, right? Those who joins us over Zoom. This is so good. Here we go. Oh, we're done. Oh, oh, Mikael, can you please go back to Zoom? Oh, can you go live? I don't know what to do. Mikael, don't, oh no, did you end it, everything? No, you are still all live. Okay. See we're you. Still, you can hear me? Okay, there you go. Yeah. Because it went out on our here we go. We okay, see here we yeah, go. You see that? Spinning, yes. We have a spinning wheel. We're gonna start with Darren and Tuanda. I'm gonna spin it for you, okay? Here, I'm gonna spin. Ta-da! Let's see what Darren and Tuanda gets for joining us today. Dun -da -da -dun. A cleanser! Yay! <laughs> Darren and T, I'm gonna send it to you, okay? Then next, we're going to go to Gina. Let's go to Gina. Jen, thank you so much for joining us today. Ta -da. Gina got a turner. Yay. Thank you. Gina. So you see, you learn how to cook and you get something still. Isn't that awesome? Next, we're going to go to, um, let's go to Sharon because I've kept seeing Sharon. Here we go, Sharon. This is for you. Thank you for joining us over Zoom. Oh, thank you too. A lot of learnings today. Aw. Oh, Sharon, plan source for your future Yay. Yay. <laughs> this is thank very you. Helpful. I just had somebody get a whole case from me um, last month. Then Thanks. next, Lorraine, 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 Lorraine. Thank you for having us. Of course, we're so grateful that you got to join us. Oh, Lorraine, look at that. You got a turner. 
Yeah. Oh, perfect. Thanks. Right? Thank Do you, you already have a turner? Is this your first? No, not yet. Oh, yeah, there you, is... you will love it. Like we've been using it. Do you see how it doesn't cut your crepes? Yeah, I'm excited to use it for the crepes. Yay. Okay, we will <laughs> for shipment and everything. Thank you. Next. Well, oh, we're going to eat next month, so, so you can just send it to me, too. Okay, perfect. For Lorraine's perfect. gift, yeah. This one. So this is Amy. Amy, you got a turner. Yay. Mark cooking for you, Amy, in the kitchen. Who else hasn't gotten anything? Marissa, right? Marissa. Yeah. yeah. Marissa, here you go, Marissa. Okay. Ta-da. I'm hoping for a cleanser. <laughs> I need cleansers. Yes, you got oh, it. There it goes. <laughs> Marissa is a cleanser. See? I told you. <laughs> for awesome. Okay. All right. That's it. So that's it. And honey, can you please put it put us back? And then the last thing is, I did say the 12, the six watt roaster. Wait, can you see this? It's here. I'm glad it's popular. I'm glad you found um i think let me see what is this this is a six quart yeah this is a six quart roaster yeah it's here there's something in it oh no, that's the no that's the old one. Oh, sorry i showed you a roaster it's not the one that, no that's uh the terrine that's the different one it looks pretty, right? <laughs> uh, it looks nice. This is where we made our uh, oatmeal. We had a breakfast bar the other day. Okay, anyway. We are actually done, but uh, if you want to stay, I guess Marvi has some um, promos to discuss, but uh, if you have to go somewhere, I know we're over time now at 6.10. Uh, feel free to okay, for the life of me i ahead. couldn't find the six quart roaster there's a six quart roaster that's a limited edition piece that just came out i oh, couldn't I find it, it there in the room it's my husband who has it he showed it to sharon and lorraine <laughs> it's in there yeah it's somewhere there okay i just wanted to um, discuss with you how this six quart roaster is amazing and you can earn it okay for all of you who are owners even the non-owners so the owners who are in this call, here's how you earn your six quart roaster, okay? Refer free presentations in the month of March. They have to happen in the month of March and you will get your six quart roaster. Here it is. And then, um, so the owners, that's all you need to do. See, ta-da. It looks taller. Mm -hmm. I guess it's taller and narrower. And it's deep enough. So what I always tell people, you got to try to earn as much of these products as you can. You know why? There will come a time if you have kids, you're going to want to give this to your kids. I love this. I kid you not. And then when that time comes, you will be shocked at how much they are. And you're going to go, what? Because <laughs> I've been experiencing that a lot, okay, with our old owners. So earn them so you don't have to spend anything on them. Please reach out to me if you are interested and so we can discuss more. All right. But again, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us this week. Next Sunday, just so you know, the next thing I'm going to feature, because I'm just realizing this is something that everybody wants to learn, especially when you have kids. The other thing that's very popular among everything I make is our grab and go pancakes. Okay. Our grab and go pancakes, the way I make it, it's in such a way that you don't need to put syrup on top of it or, or anything, but literally you, the, your kids can grab and go with it, okay? You don't eat it like um, in the usual manner, which makes it so efficient, okay? And it's going to be really healthy as well, you all, and it doesn't get hard, okay? This is something that you will not believe me. It doesn't get hard when it's outside, okay? Not refrigerated, so perfect. So that's what we're going to have next Sunday and something else. Please watch out for the ingredient list, but that's what it's going to be. Hope to see you again, all, all of you. Thank Good night, you. everyone. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Tarzan. Thank you, Mikael, for being here.